Hello everyone, Suman and I are here again this week to talk about race in the workplace. So we wanted to have some further conversations. So these past several weeks we've been on discussing how that plays out in the workplace, what's the work that we can do, what are some resources for you. And so today we just wanted to hop on and, and have a little bit of further discussion around it. It's an important topic, so we really feel that we want to continue this conversation. So um, today we want to just talk about a little bit what what is going further a little bit in the conversation. So talking about now we've talked about how do you manage the emotions, what happens when they come up. And so today we wanted to talk about what if you do make a blunder, it's going to happen. We've talked about that in the past. And so now we just want to take that a step further and talk about how can you recover from that or what are some things you can maybe do? Um, and what if your boss is not agreeable to some of the things going on? So um, Suma, did you want to add anything? Yeah, no, I think that's great. Uh, you know, as you mentioned, we've talked a lot about doing the self work, what it looks like um, starting these conversations and what it looks like uh, when you show up with your authentic self and your genuine curiosity. But one of the things that we've not touched upon uh, in a little bit more detail is what if you do make a mistake? What if you say the wrong thing and someone is upset by what you have said? Um, and I'll tell you, I think the main reason that I wanted to have this conversation about this question, aside from it making sense in our chronological order of conversation, um, I was sharing with Tiffany um, this morning, I read an article where Cardi B, uh, the rapper, um, made, a, made a blunder. Uh, she talked about um, her daughter's eyes and she used a racial slur. And rather than owning up to the mistake that she made. Um, she deleted the post, uh, threw a couple of F-bombs and said, I didn't realize it was a slur, everyone calm down. So for me, that is something that you do not do. To me, that's a big giant no, that's not how you manage that situation. Um, I, my suggestion in that situation is of course, owning up to it. I did make a mistake. I mean, if you are genuinely, truly working on yourself and working on how do we have these conversations and how do you move through that place of discomfort, the biggest thing is owning up to the fact that, hey, I did make a mistake. I may not have realized that that was a racial slur or a microaggression or I didn't realize. So now that I am aware of it, let me go back not only apologize for it, but let me do some more of that self-reflection. Let me now add this to my list of things. Where did it come from? Why am I using it? What purpose is it bringing in the conversation? And sort of really working through what that looks like. Yeah, too, and I think what goes along with that when you're owning up to it is not only the, the self-awareness, which we've talked about a lot, but owning up to it. I made a mistake. That goes such a long way. But even to take that a step further, what messaging is that sending out there to people? And you and I have done a lot of work around this. I know that a lot of people are. Some people are still at the very beginning or haven't even started their journey. So what does that do to that person? And how mm -hmm. does that help them in starting their journey when they're seeing things like that? Or for the people who are not as open-minded and and who may believe things of that nature. It's really disruptive and destructive, frankly, to mm -hmm. that. And, and if you bring that into the workplace on top of it, or let's say these rumblings about Cardi B or whatnot come into the workplace and people aren't prepared to have that, that can be very damaging to the morale. And how do you recover from that? And then it becomes a leadership issue and an employee morale issue. Um, and then it's, okay, now maybe HR gets involved or your leaders and it's just not good for the engagement of the team, for the brand of the employer, and it's, it's not inclusive behavior. It's not embracing diversity. Yep, so ab absolutely. So I'd love if you can talk, talk a bit about, let's say as a team member, I hear some racial slur being used. What are your suggestions? How would I go? Do I go and approach that individual? Do I approach leadership? Do I go straight to HR? What suggestions do you have for people? Because sometimes people get very comfortable in the workplace, especially if you've been there for a long time, you're very close with your teammates. 
people get comfortable, right? And mm -hmm. admittedly, sometimes there are songs out there which have racial slurs in them and people might be singing them again and not realizing, right? And some of these things become part of mainstream for the very wrong, for very wrong reasons, but people don't realize that. And I, I recall reading a number of articles where celebrities have been singing songs and singing out those racial slurs that happen. Mm -hmm. So what if that happens in the workplace? Let's say someone is listening to a song or singing a song and put those words out there or hanging out with a friend in the break room. Well, now it would be not the break room, but let's say that is the situation <laughs> and someone has that conversation and puts out these racial slurs, you know, or the stereotypes. Oh, well, that's so typical. She looks like this or he acts like that or whatever the situation is. What suggestions do you have for people out there? What do you think should be one of the next steps? Do they approach that individual? Leadership, HR, what are your thoughts? Yeah, great question. And there are some people who are returning to the workplace, as we know, so it could happen still in a break room, right? And and in some organizations, people are considered essential workers, so they may have been here, and these things could be occurring, and I've seen this happen. So I think, assuming that it's, it's a, it can be one or two or all of the above, um, if I suggest that people are comfortable uh, that they approach that person and maybe pull them aside privately. You don't want to start, you know, a big ruckus around it, but it's definitely something where I would, I would say, you know, try to, as always with these employee relations issues, if possible, to manage them through each other um, and through the conversations that you can have with each other. So I think that's one of the, the ways. But sometimes people are not always comfortable with that, right? Um, hi, Daniel. <laughs> Thanks, Daniel, for joining us. Um, hi. Uh, hello. Hi. Welcome. Welcome again. How are you? Thank you. Uh, sorry, for, I'm late. I messed up the time difference, <laughs> but I'm good. Um, no no problem. <laughs> no problem. Um, we can just very quickly recap the question that we're talking about. So um, one of the things that Tiffany and I were talking about is what do you do if you happen to make a mistake? So we've talked a lot about that self-work. We talked about how, you, how HR can be your partner and how you continue having these conversations and putting yourself through that level of discomfort and moving through that discomfort. But one of the things we didn't talk about is what do you do when you make a mistake, whether it's a racial slur, whether it's um, a microaggression, uh, and I talked a bit about uh, an article that showed up this morning where Cardi B described her daughter's eyes with a racial slur. Um, and rather than owning up and apologizing and saying she was going to work on it, she deleted her message and she said, I didn't even know it was a racial slur. And she dropped a couple of F-bombs in that tweet. Now, I know it's Cardi B. But at the same time, it, it's really good food for thought for us to talk about what happens when you do make the microaggression and someone calls you out on that. So Tiffany was going to respond a bit to that. We had a bit of a discussion earlier, but she's talking a bit about what happens in the workplace if that were to happen. Yeah, and thanks again for joining us. We're super excited. Always great to have you and to connect with you. So um, we just appreciate you joining into the conversation and for everyone who's, who's watching this or will be watching the replay as well. Um, so one of the things that I've, I've seen in the workplace is that um, I have seen that situation where people kind of say something and they're like, oh, well, I was just singing the lyrics to a song. Are you going to tell me that I can't listen to my music? Or oh, you know, this is just how we talk amongst ourselves. One of the issues with that becomes now if there's a third party um, who's overhearing that, they may be offended. So while you and your, your person you're talking to or the group that you're talking to may not be offended, someone else who overhears it can. And so we have to be sensitive to those things in the workplace. And um, before you came on, we were talking about how you know, people are returning to work. There, there could be a break room situation or a, a hallway passing. Even it could happen on Zoom or, you know, if people are gathering at some point, um, hopefully socially distancing and safely um, for a work happy hour or something. These things do occur. And so if, if at all possible, it's good to talk to that person one-on-one -on -one privately, not to embarrass them in front of people or to cause a bunch of dramatics, but 
that's always my recommendation when it comes to employee relations and these sticky kind of interpersonal conflicts, because most people appreciate you telling them, you know, face to face having that direct conversation, recognizing that not everyone's going to be that comfortable. So talking to your leadership, talking to HR, talking to maybe even another trusted friend, um, not that, I, that I'm that uh, i by any means suggesting that we start the rumor mill or the gossip mill because that, that, that's not good for morale, but those are definitely some options. And even, I will say it again, I know you guys are probably tired of me talking about EAP, um, the Employee Assist Assistance Plan is another great resource for people. If you're just like, I don't know how to manage the situation. I'm not comfortable talking to, uh, I don't know who my HR person is, or I'm not comfortable talking to my leader for some reason. We hope that you are. Um, or you're not comfortable having that conversation with that person one-on-one. -on -one. So those are some things that uh, I have seen happen. And while we do all have rights as employees in the workplace, we also have to be mindful that we're not creating a situation of discrimination or we're not creating a diverse or inclusive environment because someone else could overhear that. And while you may not, there's intent versus impact. You may not have meant harm, but it could land with someone in a way that, that they feel some type of way about it. Yep, and I think the other thing also to keep in mind is, if you do have the conversation with the person who has done that microaggression or racial slur, um, they may be defensive because they're embarrassed, right? And keep that in mind because most likely what will happen is their defense mechanisms come up and they get angry, they get flustered and no, it is not you. It is not you. It is, it's, it's them. They have been caught. They may not even have realized it. They've been called out and now they're on the defense. The hope is that they will then go back and do some thinking and reflecting and come back and a conversation can start again. Um, and even if it doesn't, you may want to go back to them in a couple of days and say, hey, just wanted to check in, make sure you're okay. I didn't, you know, just wanted to make sure that you understood whatever you said was, was not appropriate and here are the reasons why and see if you can start that dialogue. Because mm -hmm. the other thing that happens is it becomes, you know, we talk about inclusivity and that becomes, that can become an excluding factor where it's, oh, and I've seen this too. Oh, you know, it's this group against this group. And, and that's never a good situation either because we want workplaces that are inclusive of all people. And just because, oh, hey, we look the same or um, we like the same things, that's, that's great and that's very important too that we bring our whole selves to work, but at the same time, being mindful of what that is on the other side. And that's, that's part of doing the work that Suman and I have talked about so many times over the past several weeks. It's very, very important. Yep, excellent. Yeah, that was a really good question. Thanks for that answer, Tiffany. Um, Danielle, did you have any other questions? Did you come with any questions? We wanted to make sure that we reach out to you if you had any. Uh, yes, actually, it's uh, related to this discussion because uh, even the last time we talked about, you know, addressing uh, any issues that uh, come up with the person involved. But I was curious what we can do to give a feedback to the rest of the team and the company to actually uh, prove them that we've taken action and that, uh, you know, we, we are dealing with that because sometimes, you know, uh, maybe um, for others people, it's not enough to uh, know that you have had the conversation with the people. So sometimes may not be, I don't know, I feel like it's maybe not uh, enough to, see, to say, don't worry, we, we, we have made the conversation, we, we talk about this with the person. So how do we give uh, a feedback? And so would that be feedback as into HR and the company leadership as a whole, letting them know that these situations are happening and the conversations are happening? Yeah, um, these and yeah, I mean, even with specific situations, you know, uh, maybe the team wants to know how the uh, company is taking action to, you know, uh, prevent these episodes from repeating. Yeah, I'm gonna let Tiffany take that because that sounds like an HR question. <laughs> I didn't want to steal any thunder if you wanted it. <laughs> it's a shared effort. I love it. Um, I think, you know, that is one of those things, and y'all, that's really, it can be very complicated, right? Because we, we as HR do not want to break confidentiality. We're bound by, by those things. And so 
sometimes that that just is it's a tough answer but sometimes that has to be enough because we can't share i wouldn't share about you know something you may be counseled on just like i wouldn't for that other person and oftentimes what you'll find is someone goes oh, nancy didn't get fired over that okay, I guess the company supports these types of behaviors, but we don't always know what Nancy's manager or human resources um, have done in the past or what's going on currently or what's even planned for the future. So that's a great, great question because it is so, so common. And we, we have to be able to have people fitted to what makes sense for what the next uh, best step is. So, you know, I hope that people are not in the business of just firing people without seeking to understand and doing a little fact finding, uh, which typically should happen and typically does. Um, but we definitely have to be sensitive to those situations because that can, that can be a whole other ball of wax that we could land into some trouble um, if leaders start sharing things or if employees start finding out things that, uh, you know, a lot of times it's on a need to know basis. Only those who need to know, and that might be a couple of managers, it could be another employee if they were a witness to something and they need to be pulled into that. But, um, and, and sometimes it, it does result in someone being on suspension or terminated. It really just depends on, on what it is. And we circle that back to intent versus impact. So it really, it doesn't mean that just because you didn't intend something, de depending on how egregious it is, it could land in the space of termination. Or, you know, maybe it's just, you know, we feel like this person needs retraining or they really just, you know, kind of into this space without understanding. Is there something we can do to help support them? So always I advise coming from a place of understanding. So Tiffany, a follow-up question to that. So let's say the situation is happening um, and we understand confidentiality. Um, do you suggest at some point that leadership address the situation in a very general manner, saying something to the effect of a situation occurred, um, please know that we've taken care of it, that it's in the process, sort of acknowledging that situation without breaking confidentiality? Yeah, I think depending on the situation, um, and thanks for um, bringing it back to that, I think that that's very important. So, um, and, and sometimes that's all you can say is, we acknowledge that this has occurred, we can't get into a lot of the details, but sometimes without that why, or people just even knowing, um, we talked about those elephants that are in the room, sometimes that might be on people's minds. And if you don't call that out or say, this is not, I've been in meetings where a whole team has been pulled in and it's like, this is what occurred down to some maybe granular detail because in that particular situation, it warranted that. And it was that serious that the entire team needed to know this was not acceptable behavior. We don't tolerate this, um, you know, without getting into details down to the specific person mm -hmm. or people. Um, I, I think that's a great idea whenever possible. There are certainly situations where that, that may not be possible or where it's just um, very risky, you know, from a, mm -hmm. from a protection standpoint of that person, or maybe there's an ongoing investigation that, that could be difficult in that way, but I, I do advise that if, if it's possible to at least call it out. Um, and sometimes people still aren't happy with that answer, even when those things have occurred. And it's like, ah, well, that's not enough. And but right. sometimes enough just has to be enough. Right. And and I do I, I agree with you with what you're saying because I think a lot of times what happens is if it's not addressed in some way and fashion it builds a distrust between employees and leadership um, because they feel, well, we know something is happening, uh, but we don't see or hear that it's being taken care of. So what does that mean? Does that mean that they're allowing this to happen, that they believe in what is going on and, and it's okay? So what does that do to the impact of, on the value and the mission of the company? Um, and so, I do agree that if there is a way for leadership to somehow, some way, put some statement out, um, it would help with rumor mills, help with productivity, you know, which then trickles down to productivity and things of that nature. So I do encourage leadership at some, in some way or form to see if there's a way for them to address that they are handling that a particular situation without going into detail and protecting confidentiality. Yeah, I was going to hit the rumor mill too, but you already got it for us. So. <laughs> Good old water cooler talk. Back, girl. 
We got this piggyback. <laughs> We're a good team. <laughs> it's so important. But along with that, we talked last week, um, and Daniel, you brought this question up actually about um, what, what if, how do we know that it's genuine, right? And how do you know that the company is not just doing it because it looks good or because there have been complaints or something? And hopefully those things are already occurring so that it's not like, oh, well, well, they just had to do that. And then we go about our merry way and things don't change because that's that can be problematic as well. I hope that answered your question. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Good. Um, any other questions that you can think of for today? Uh, well, yes. Actually, I have another one, which is uh, more related to the uh, recruitment, recruitment process and the notion of unconscious bias. And uh, particularly, I was thinking about um, how can we, you know, um, train ourselves to recognize unconscious bias related to race. So, uh, because, you know, I'm asking this from the standpoint of view of a white male that grew up in Italy. And so far, we uh, didn't have to deal much with diversity. So, um, looking at how, you know, the society and people are reacting to these uh, uh, thing and diversity and immigration from uh, uh, countries from Africa and uh, seeing how they are dealing with with the situation you know in society which is quite not friendly so um, I'm uh, trying to understand if this may have an impact on you know uh, companies that are facing diversity for the first time and so they have to you know how they can train train their, their self for, you know, diversity and unconscious bias, bias related to race. Go for it, Tiffany. <laughs> I think, you know, we, was it last week or the week before? They, I can't remember the weeks and um, during this pandemic time just kind of moves along very fluidly. Mm -hmm. um, but we did touch on that. I think it was a couple weeks ago and I don't think you were able to join us then, but we talked about, you know, how do we attract um, diverse talent and how do we engage them and retain them and a lot of it is making sure that we're doing those things and that we're sincere about it but also um, you know it is each of us checking our biases at the door and understanding that we each come to the workplace um, as ourselves and hopefully that's celebrated for us to be our whole selves at work it, it can be a challenge in order to because we all come with bias whether or not we recognize it we talk about being aware and doing the work and owning that behavior and what to do if you do go oops I made you know I made a mistake how do I recover from that but there are trainings out there uh, you can talk to your HR department or the employer resource groups are a great source for that there's lots of articles out there lots lots and lots of free trainings these days during uh, COVID-19 so there, there are a host of resources out there for that but we have to be able to recognize where our bias is and what that means. And it means that each of us does come with that. None of us are perfect, despite um, I will be the first to admit that I'm a perfectionist. And I know that, you know, I still have flaws. And so it's working on those things, seeking out resources and individuals who can help you learn, as well as, you know, just even what we're doing today being open to understanding. And when we do that and we put that at the forefront before our employees are in the door, that's the best way. We should always have a strategy behind that versus being reactive. And I will, I will say that for anything um, that, that truly helps, but we have to be aware of our own biases. We have to not get defensive when someone challenges uh, our, our line of thinking, um, provided they're doing so respectfully and professionally. That's how we grow and that's, that's diversity by its very definition. Yep. And then I'd love to, I'd like to add that in this time where there's so much talk around diversity, uh, I encourage companies to really go back and look at their value statements and their mission statements um, and have a strategic plan put in place of what that looks like. Um, and I'm not talking about affirmative action, I'm talking more about what does it mean when we have a diverse group, diverse thinking, diverse feedback, diverse ideas, and how that can get built in to the structure of the organization. So then along with that will come the training that's needed for 
recruiters. Um, I will admit without going into very much detail that I had a situation where um, I had an unconscious bias, but these conversations really helped me realize as I was in the midst of that moment that I was doing it. So I think the conversation is so important for us to, to have so that people are thinking about it. It's in the forefront of our thinking as we talk to neighbors, as we talk to coworkers, as a recruiter, as leadership, um, that all of this is really in the forefront of, of our thinking as we go through our daily lives because that can only be positive, right? Granted, you might be going through your discomfort, sitting through it, pushing through it, and fighting through it, but when you come out at the end, it's gonna be worth it. Definitely. Thank you for the answer. <laughs> You're welcome. Do you have other I questions? Love, I'm sorry. Yeah, and I love that you come with these questions. It just makes for such great conversation. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> that's the intent. Do you have more for us? <laughs> um, no, maybe uh, just one more related to this, which is, you know, um, how can it's a broad question of how uh, we can deal with, you know, for example, uh, last time we talked about conflict in the workplace and, uh, uh, but for example, how can we deal with a situation where external situation influences what is happening in the company, but not in a direct way. And what I mean is, for example, there is some, something going on in society and then we have the, the same situation that is not really happening, but everyone is aware of what is happening and maybe you know, someone and, for example, the Black Lives Matter, you know, you may have uh, people may start to behave differently towards uh, their co-workers. So how can we, for example, um, I don't know, maybe acknowledge the situation or deal with those external influences? Yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, Tiffany, if it's okay, I'd like to start and then you can chime in. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Perfect. So um, we don't touched a little bit upon this in one of our first conversations. Um, I think a lot of it goes back to, again, what the company believes they should do. Um, and it stands again with who they are as a company, what they want, what their belief system is and their value system. Um, and that they genuinely put out information uh, one way or the other and that they support these conversations and create that safe space for the conversations to happen. So with regards to Black Lives Matter, um, you know, in the beginning we saw so many companies putting out these messages and support and support, um, but there were also companies that didn't. Um, I touched upon, we touched upon a particular situation where someone had asked, well, what happens if my company doesn't respond to that, you know, and I'm very frustrated because they're not taking a stand. They're sort of ignoring it. And, you know, the, the response to that was the company really needs to look into what they stand for. Not, you know, is this an environment that they want their employees to come in and really feel comfortable and feel at home? And what does that mean for productivity? How does that look at the long run? And then what does that mean to the message that they put out into the community? If, the if they want that support from the community, if they want to show that support for the community, whether your business is directly impacted by Black Lives Matter or not, putting out that message speaks volumes. And again, the genuine message that goes out there, not that I'm following everyone and it's a trend, let me just put a message out, but really what does that mean? So if a company does put out that information that we support this, then let's have that dialogue in the office. Let's create that safe space for people to come in and say, I'm scared, I'm confused, I don't know what's happening, I'm nervous about what's happening. Um, you know, because you're, you're bringing all that emotion into your workplace. You don't just leave all that emotion outside the door before you step into the workplace. So leadership needs to create a space where they understand, okay, so what's happening out in the world is affecting our employees and they're bringing that emotion into the workplace. So let's have that conversation. Let this place be a safe place for them to come and have those conversations. Do we know all the answers? No. Can we provide all the answers? No. Um, do we know what next steps look like? Probably not, but we won't know any of that unless we have the conversations 
and that it's a safe space. That doesn't mean that we're excluding anyone, but we want our employees to know that they can come here, have the conversations, and sort of take a deep breath, right? Because all of that is going to do, it builds trust with your company. Um, you know it's a safe place for you to come that increases productivity rather than you walking in with the stress and now I can't talk about anything that's happening and I'm angry, I'm frustrated, I'm scared, but I still have to work, right? So what does that mean? That just trickles down into everything that you're doing. You're short with your staff, you're short with your coworkers, you know, or you get you, you become very internalized. I don't want to talk about anything or anyone, and I'm just going to sit here focused and do my work. Well, that's not productive either. And it's it's interesting that you bring that conversation up or that, that situation, because I literally just had that conversation with an employee, um, and they were super frustrated, and they're like, I don't feel like this is a safe space for me. I don't feel like I can show up authentically. I don't feel like my company has my back. Um, when I voiced my concerns, then they were like, oh, we support you, but their actions were not showing that. So that's kind of what we've been talking about here, right? It's, it's not being reactionary or if people see you flip-flopping, that, that destroys the credibility right there. And it does not make that person feel supported. This person is like, I think I'm going to quit my job because I've tried to be supported. I've tried to bring um, my whole self. I don't see diversity um, in my workplace, and and I just, I don't know if I can continue to do this. Their productivity has suffered. The morale of the company has suffered because other people who have seen this are like, well, hey, why aren't they doing these things? And why aren't you protecting this employee? And why aren't you taking a stand for them? But again, as we've discussed on previous calls, other people are in companies too are on their own journey, but it behooves you to take um, an appropriate stand, I would say, if that's in line with your mission, vision, and values, because it is definitely something that your employees are watching and you don't want to have turnover because you failed to say something or you you um, did not support that employee in that place. And these are, that was a classic example, Zoom, and I literally just had that conversation the other day and it's upsetting to hear that. Uh, we should not be in that place, but we are. And so that's why these conversations are so important. So here's a follow-up sort of question. Um, let's say in that workplace scenario, um, the company doesn't want to put out a statement for whatever reason. However, they're doing the work behind the scenes. What's the thought and reaction to that? Is that more important than putting out a statement or does a statement need to come out in addition to doing work? What are the thoughts on that? That is a good one. <laughs> I, I personally believe that the work behind it is, is important. But to me, at the same time, that being said, if you're doing all that hard work, why don't you show it off? Why don't you show that to your employees, to the organization, to uh, the community and the public? I think that that's so important. But I, I would say that your employees need to know that and they need to know the work being done and, and you shouldn't hide that and hide behind it or try to figure out and make it perfect. Also seek your employees feedback. It, it's mm -hmm. not just something that should come top down or that the, the senior executive should be making decisions, include your employees. There's absolutely an opportunity there. And that's one way um, to Dan's question earlier that we can make sure that employees are kind of aware of what's going on. Now, is that gonna be the case 100% of the time? No, but it is helpful whenever you can share those things. Hey, here's what we're doing. Even if it's little snippets along the way or to say, hey, we're not all the way there, but here's the work that we are doing. And here's the vision for what we see that being back to mm -hmm. Suman's point about strategy. And I'm all over some strategy. <laughs> Right. Low strategy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, and I agree, you know, I, I, and yet if you try to look at it from company standpoint, you know, you've got the, the argument of black lives matter and all lives matter. Right. And people, right. it's a very touchy political, you know, people have turned that into politics and all of that stuff. So I feel like while yes, you're doing all the hard work behind the scenes, put it out there. Absolutely, that would be the best case scenario. But if nothing else, the fact that work is being done behind the scenes is huge. 
Mm -hmm. So I'd rather at least work being done behind the scenes than nothing at all. True story. I echo that. <laughs> good, good. And do you think that one possible initiative, for example, for Black Lives Matter could be for a company to pay employee to go uh, protest, for example, pay, pay them their, their work day to, to go protest? Yeah, so we talked about that too, where um, I think it's really important. One way that companies can show support is to offer as a benefit volunteer time or time away if there's a rally or protest, but those are really great ways for companies to show support to what employees believe and what they believe in and what they wanna stand for is to offer that time away for volunteer, however you wanna use that volunteer time, whether it's to go protest, whether it's to go volunteer in an organization that helps move and, and move the mission forward. Um, I think it's, that was something very important that we talked earlier about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. All right, so we are getting um, into that time where I think it would be a great time for us to wrap up. Um, we always love having Daniel, Daniel here. The <laughs> thought-provoking questions are fantastic. Um, I hope people will watch this replay, uh, take the time to think about things, um, send us questions, whether you want to post them or send it to us uh, privately. We're happy to address questions next week. Uh, but the plan is to show up again next week, Tuesday at noon Eastern, uh, and we'll get all the links out in the next couple of days along with this replay. Yeah. So thanks Great. again for joining us, Danielle, and everyone who's watching now or will watch later. We really appreciate it. So um, let's keep these conversations and doors open and uh, keep creating safe spaces and, and safe workplaces. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.